Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, MGMT203. Good to have you back again. So this is chapter six in week three, and I thought these first series of chapters really give you just that overview you need to address some key items for your Panama Canal paper that you're working on this week. So read through these, grab the high-level items, and work to integrate these into the paper. You'll be in great shape. So here we go, kicking off. This uh, chapter is traditional and agile project management, right? And so there really is uh, the, the distinction between them. I'll just say uh, quickly. So traditional project management is what the PMP certification exam is all about. Those, that credentialed exam, when somebody has a PMP, they are taking the traditional. And that is... Uh, largely the life cycle that we refer to as predictive project management. Uh, sometimes it's called waterfall project management, right? And that's where we know largely the uh, deliverable when we start the project, right? We've defined it and we've planned it out. Now, agile is when we don't really know what the deliverable will look like in the end in its uh, finer points. We aren't able to detail it clearly up front. And so it's known as change-driven life cycle or iterative life cycle or incremental. Those are common terms for agile. And that's really the difference between the two. Most of this will be on traditional or predictive or waterfall project management, uh, which can be applied to agile. The last five or so slides touch on agile. So now in this traditional approach, this is really kind of all of the Knowledge, er, uh, knowledge areas, initiating in, in one blue box, planning into the right of that. Uh, below that is executing. Uh, to the left of that is monitoring and controlling. And at the very bottom center are closing processes. This is um, about 98% in accordance with the PMBOK guide, but not completely, all right? This is our own management class. But... Um, but it just gives you an, an idea of what processes are in each process group. And you see we're going to focus today a lot on the center one called planning. And all of the items, you see the legend on the far right. Uh, so you'll see where integration, which is you, the project manager, you're that center box in brown in planning. You are integrating all of those processes this is a great slide if you take a few minutes just to study it yourself. The brown is who you are. That's what you do for a living as a project manager uh, as you integrate all of the processes happening around you. Big picture for the entire project. In fact, I also want to point out in weeks one and two, we talked about business documents. Notice that's in the top left-hand corner of the slide. That's because business documents aren't part of the project. They're done with the C-suite and the sponsor. Uh, they give you your business case, and your, which has your feasibility study and your benefits management plan we talked about. And those documents start, so I put them right above the initiating process group, start, kick off your project with the project charter. Okay, so uh, the initial project coordination again starts with the project charter, right? This is where we flesh out between those business case documents, uh, but before the project uh, plan kicks off. And, um, and, and to do that, we're going to have to talk initially to some key stakeholders. We talked about stakeholders in week two. Right, very important. That's uh, an individual, person, or group that's impacted or could be impacted both positively or negatively, right? So we want to talk to clients and we want to think of clients not just as external. In my mind, I think external, right? But really, it's just uh, they can be internal to the company or they can be external to the company, right? We want to think of them and sort of expand our concept of where are my stakeholders? In fact, even a lot of times these outputs in project management talk about, or inputs that talk about agreements, right? And I said, think of contracts, right? Because sometimes even contracts get forgotten as a source of uh, expertise or uh, deliverable management. 
So sticking with the charter, right? The charter is high level. So those business documents I see are very high level. Can we make money off of this? Does it fill a business need for the project? But then we, we drill down to the project charter, which are all now high level items, right? And we're transitioning these big business documents down to high, from very high level business documents to high level charter items. And then next we'll build the detailed project plan. So in the charter, we're looking to cover these items on the slide. So uh, just the charter process, you don't need to know this or study it. I just, if you're looking for what makes a great charter or what's a charter do for you, notice I've highlighted it gives, once it's signed at the end, if you look down at the bottom and the output, once we sign it, the sponsor is going to sign it. And frankly, the project manager should too. It gives the project manager legal authority to use resources, right? So it, um, and besides the legal authority, it uh, formally initiates your project once it's signed, right? And again, it's all at a high level. Well, what does it cover? So it kind of, cover, I just threw some items on here. You can add your own, right? This is not all inclusive. But you notice I highlighted the project, man oh, the project manager's name up top. She wants your name on it before it's signed by the sponsor, right? Because it's giving you authority. Uh, you want to define the business need up front. And the uh, preliminary high-level scope statement, if you remember in the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge example, I said in the charter you'd want to say you want to connect San Francisco to that body of land on the other side of the bay. It needs to be eight lanes wide for each side. It needs to have a pedestrian walk path on each side and a bicycle path. It needs to support 400 tons of tra you know, I'm making up numbers now, but you get the point. Those are measurable. They're not, they're not unuseful. They're measurable. Next in the planning, we're going to develop the detail to get there, right? You want to list some high level assumptions uh, and constraints. You'll get this from some key stakeholders in the business documents. Uh, you want to list some risks, costs, EEFs, OPAs, and key success criteria. What makes success in the end? And then you both want to sign it. Now, uh, then that transitions to that traditional project activity we call planning. This is where we're going to develop the detail from that high level, biz high, very high level business documents to high level charter, now into the detail of the project plan, including your schedule, your budgets, uh, your scope, your risk, your communications, and et cetera. This, the traditional planning activity uh, begins with series of meetings with your various teams, um, and it ends with a kickoff meeting for project execution. So the planning process is going to address these items, right? It's uh, every project is built. So these these predictive waterfall life cycle projects, they are built for a specific deliverable, right? We've defined it up front. So we build a project plan where I don't want change. But as a project manager, because my project is unique, I expect change. Change is going to happen. So I want to build a process for managing the change, right? Which would be to me called integrated change control. Uh, nothing in the project plan gets changed ever without going through change control process. All right, I want to develop communications plan. I want to uh, identify the uh, key processes and the deliverable, which I'm going to do in my work breakdown structure, which is part of scope management. Or scope is the, the scope defines the objectives, and from the objectives within scope, we develop the requirements. For the project right um, and then I'm going to notice the bottom line continuously monitor and improve I'm always doing continuous process improvement and I'm always looking for change requests if something is outside of my metrics right and so if something is deviating from the scope statement so speaking of the scope statement, part of this planning, one of the first uh, processes is scope management. I'm going to define what this project is about, right? I'm going to analyze the product, right? 
uh, so that I can develop the project scope, right? Uh, and this is the key output of the process called project, uh, develop project scope statement or define scope. And a great scope statement has these key items, usually written in some narrative form, right? Uh, and it'll define the project justification. So you can see we're still tying the strategy in the business documents to our charter, to our plan now in scope management. So business justification, what's the need? Then we're going to define the product scope, that long term, long past our project, uh, long past our project, what is the scope that we are uh, defining for the product? Then the project scope which means we're going to describe the deliverables in some detail, right? And what's acceptance criteria? Remember we said on the charter what was success? That acceptance criteria now that we're drilling down needs to support that charter success. And there's a tie together of those. You're constantly aligning the business documents, the charter, and the plan, right? It's a just as important to say what's not in the project is as important as what is in the project that will save you a lot of time and of course list now your more detailed constraints and assumptions assumption constraints are limits on your project and assumptions are assumed true without uh, proof okay so then the project plan is going to continue to address some of these items and from this scope statement, notice uh, bullet two, I develop the project scope. That's the scope statement. From there, I will use that scope statement to break down the scope into work packages, right? Called the WBS or work breakdown structure, the WBS. And so uh, I'm going to then define the requirements out of that WBS the detailed requirements, and then establish practices for managing them. From that scope statement and the WBS there, from there I'm going to build my schedule. Now that I know all the requirements, then I will build my schedule and from there do cost management. Okay, So it's, it's really a whole brain approach to project planning, right? Uh, project managers typically uh, use really the left and right brain. We are creative, right? Uh, that's why what we do is called integration management, those brown boxes on slide one, integration management, right? And coming up with solutions to uh, balance trade-offs in the iron triangle that we've talked about. Uh, one of the ways we do a whole brain approach is through mind mapping. Uh, I, when I was in the Air Force, uh, I had a project uh, and I had no idea where to begin. It was massive. It was a whole new inspection system for the entire command. So I just put uh, the problem right on a, the center of the, the wall. It was a winked wall. And from there, over days, I began to talk to people and learn, well, okay, I've got to talk to the headquarters here. And then I've got a separate line to the headquarters at the Pentagon. Then I've got a separate line to the various wings that will be affected or the bases, Air Force bases, right? And from there, I developed something that looked very much like this, right? I didn't know it at the time, but I was building a mind map. Uh, and so you can see in the mind map here, uh, the key problem state in the middle and the places that are affected. And once you identify the places affected, well, what under them? will be affected that I need to work on. And from there, I was able to create an execution checklist uh, in the process. So mind mapping, very useful. It was an accident, I stumbled upon it. So the plan is in action, right? We consider the consequences of these various activities. We may even use software to uh, help us develop the project plan, uh, including the uh, Microsoft project might be one of them. I'm going to stop there because from there we're going to break down from the scope statement, which is key to planning. What are you doing? What's your objective? And how do we break down the scope statement? That's called the work breakdown structure, WBS. And that's next.